Okay, I'm going to try to walk us through a little bit of this course in financial statement analysis. So the first thing we want to do is we want to, uh, let's make sure we're registered for the software of this course. So if you click on my business course link, it should take you to a site that asks you to register or not register. If you go to register, it's going to ask you for a code. So there are two codes that you need to know. The first code, excuse me, I went too far, too fast. The first code you need is the course code. And the course code is right here, 6409. 03359-5D-504-FC-35A-62D. If you uh, put in that code, uh, you should be able to then link to a site and it will then ask you for your access code. Um, I believe I sent you an announcement that actually has the code in it. So use that code that I sent there. While we're here, let's talk about the course itself and the links within it. So the very first module, and by the way, these are chapters are referred to as modules in this book. There's no home module. So the very first thing you go to is module one. And all of these chapters and modules are set up the same way. The first thing you will see is there is a section where you can, you can read the book. So you can, um, if you're out and about and you don't have access to uh, your textbook or you don't want to carry your textbook around, you can just log into the book and you can read it that way. Um, there are also some kind of cool things that go along with this book. If you look at the top, there's actually a speaker here. If you click on this speaker, if I'm not mistaken, somebody will read the book to you. So uh, there's lots of things that this will do for you. Obviously, reading the textbook and having that ready access for you is, uh, is obviously uh, uh, pretty important. Um, so let's come and now go back to uh, the module, back where we were. So if we click back a couple. <clears throat> so there are learning objectives. Each one of these learning objectives is a video. So if you open this learning objective, you can play the, the uh, video that you want to listen to. And obviously it goes and reviews some of the more important parts of the chapter. Each chapter also has some homework problems. So there are some guided examples. I've blocked out some of the ones here that uh, aren't relevant for our particular needs here. But if you click on these modules, on these um, problems, again, somebody will go through a problem. It's a video of somebody solving a problem for that chapter. Hello, this video, we are this going video, to play we are going to play dash I can dash I hear what, what that sounds like. The following financial, so, the following information. financial you, information. You work your way through one video or one module and then work your way to the next. Again, it is set up exactly the same way few more learning objectives in the second uh, module, few more types of problems to solve. And at the bottom is the module one and two quiz. And these quizzes are, they're together. Both chapters are together. So you only take one quiz, right? So you'll just go through here. You can preview the quiz. I'm not sure exactly what happens when you do that. It says this quiz has a one hour time limit. As soon as you start your attempt, it's going to start. So obviously you need to have an hour of time to finish this quiz. And that's primarily what the website is going to do for us. Provide you with some videos, some problem solving, things to watch, 
and it also is a place to take quizzes. So now let's go back and look at the modules themselves. The module within Canvas. It's a little confusing, everybody calling things the same thing. But the Canvas course, as you know from other courses, is all run through this module system. <clears throat> so by the way, if uh, when you're looking for your access code, the access code that you look for is actually in your textbook. It's the second or third page. Uh, that's the code. It's like a scratch uh, thing like scratch lotteries. So again, you can look at some overview outcomes, what the class is about, the checklist for the course. Oops, I'm sorry I went too far. The course information is the first stuff we need to know. Here's the syllabus. Um, there's an assignment grid that talks about grading, right? So we need to know how the course is ultimately going to be evaluated. You'll see 30% for quizzes, 20% for homework. There's a discussion forum setting, financial analysis projects, 30%, and then of course attendance and or participation is 10%. So now we go back uh, to, the, to the sections. That's all we really have for course information. The next section then is, um, for, uh, is uh, for topic one, right? This is overview and financial statements. And you can again see here that there's a, I think I th keep thinking I'm missing things. Oh yes. So here's week one, topic one, talking about what we're gonna do for this. There's an overview and outcome, a checklist of what's required for the week. Now what you're going to do is you're gonna choose one of these two companies, either Disney or Comcast. Download the documents for this. This, uh, uh, it says Disney RMA. This is actually for both companies. So you'll download two files and this PDF. That is the company that we're going to evaluate throughout this course. So that will get us up and ready to start the modules. So the first thing you can find is obviously there's a PowerPoint presentation. And the way I would suggest you follow this course is the first thing I would do is to open this and scroll my way down through the spreadsheet as you go, or the, the PowerPoint. As you go down through from time to time, again, identify the learning objectives, what we're supposed to get from this chapter. As you go down through, there's obviously definitions, terms, right? As we follow our way down through, and we're going to look at financial statements. That's obviously a, the, the course itself. And then it goes through some exercises about the accounting equation, does some problems. This one, it says M124. This is the mini case 24 from your textbooks. Um, so then, again, just work your way down through. So there are some problems that are worked out here. And again, as you look down here, there are also some statements or notes about the PowerPoint. So I would go through this, I wouldn't spend a tremendous amount of time, except maybe trying to understand the answers, do the math for the problems, just to get a picture of what the, the module, what this topic area is really all about. So when you get down, obviously you'll finish this module, now you'll have a picture of what you're gonna study. The next thing I would do is then I would go to the My Business Course website and I would do chapter one first. So I would watch the videos for the learning objectives. I would uh, maybe work at some of those problems. And then I would see, do you have any questions? Do you have things that you really didn't understand or you don't have a, a picture graph about or a perfectly good strong picture, then you can go back and read the textbook to fill in some of the blanks. Then I would finish module one and their homework. So what does the homework look like? Well, there are two parts of homework. 
the first thing you will have is something referred to as uh, oh, that's not it. That's the homework solution. You don't want to see that. That'd be bad. Get rid of that. Get rid of it quick before you write down the answers. So here's the actual homework for module one. And again, you're going to fill in the yellow boxes as you go down through. Again, there's quite a few problems. They all were at the back of the textbook. So this is exercise 1-34. And when you go down a little bit further, you'll come to problems. Problem 141. And again, all you're going to do is fill in the boxes, right? Fill in the boxes, and then you'll upload that, obviously, uh, upload that to me. So let me uh, move on here. This is, I want to close this one. Close this one. I need to open another file, I apologize. There is a file that's called Study Guide Problems. Let me go to one, section one, and here we go. Module one, study problem. So when you open that, again, it is just like the homework problem, except they are solved. So you'll look at that problem, figure out how to answer that question. And I would do that. And I will also do the stuff that's on the exam, right? Or in the, uh, on the website, go through those problems. And that should give you enough um, information to solve all the problems for chapter one. So if you have any issues with that or any challenges with moving forward with that, Make sure you don't uh, delay. Get in touch with me uh, as soon as you can. So again, we've gone over the website so we understand what PowerPoint is about. We've gone through the problems. The next thing we want to talk about is we want to talk about the projects. This is really the meat of this course. So for financial statement analysis, project one, you're going to download some things from Canvas. We've already talked about that. And the first part you're going to do is you're going to read some sections in the annual report. You're going to read the business and risk factors. After that, I want you to write a small synopsis of what the company's primary business is, what its segments are, what country it works in, what are its products. Also, write about what the company feels its risks are. Again, if you think about it, we're going to do a complete financial analysis of this company. This is the first picture of what the company thinks the company is. Following that, we're going to then move to the spreadsheet. So you would have already would have downloaded the spreadsheet. And in the far A1C corner, that's where the income statement is. All the data is already in here for you. You don't have to enter any data. You are just going to use the information that's provided. So one of the things that it calculates is all the financial ratios. It also comes over here. There are common size statements. There are statements that reflect changes over time relative position of assets to sales as far as percentages, looks at capital structure, something called cash conversion analysis, DuPont analysis, free cash flow analysis, and in the end of this course, we're going to do something called pro forma forecasting. So just to get a kind of big picture of where we're going, you are given five years of information and we are going to then predict, we're not going to do all five years, we're going to predict two years of financial statements moving forward. What that will calculate for us and do for us is then create some financial ratios. The first five years are history, and the next two years is the results of our decisions of what to do for this company. So that's essentially where this is all going to go. One of the things we'll like to see as we go along are some graphs. So the graphs are these additional links down below. 
So if you wanted to look at basic earning power, the basic earning power of the company here is the graph. So the industry is the orange numbers and the company are the blue numbers. And of course, once we understand what basic earning power is all about, and you see this picture, you should be able to say something about the industry historically and the company uh, of what it's been doing over the last couple of years. And then from whatever you know about the company as we go along, you might be able to make some statements about where you think the company will go in the future. So now if we go back, right, we have uh, the PowerPoint. There's a, a video on DuPont analysis. Here are the study problems for module one, the homework. Here's where you upload the, the uh, homework exam, uh, uh, assignment. There's a discussion analysis. So every week we'll have a discussion analysis. Essentially, you're going to watch, usually it's a video, but you'll watch a video and you'll answer some questions, right? So the video will, will come up here. This one we're going to talk about the an introduction to industry analysis. I want you to answer or do three things. The first, and I want these identified. Number one, right on the thing there, summary. Give me a very brief summary of what this video was all about. Number two, I need to know two takeaways from the video and how you think they might influence your personal life or your career or how my company might, might use these. Again, they're not always strictly business questions. Sometimes they're career questions. Sometimes they're personal growth questions. In addition to that, you're going to respond to at least two other students in the class. How I would like to see you do this, this is the requirement is, you're going to read, there's only six people in the class, so it won't take long to read everybody's answers, but you'll read everybody's responses and you'll choose two of those to respond to. Essentially, this is what I would like you to do. I would like you to say, hey, John, if the person's name is John, I really liked your video, especially the point you made about X. And then give an explanation of why that means so much to you. What, what are your thoughts about that? Do you agree or disagree, right? Once you have answered that, what I would like you to do is to end your reply to them with some form of question. Right, so think if we're talking in a discussion, right, I'm actually gonna say, what did you think about that video? And you'll say, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll say, yeah, I really agree with that. I think that's a good idea. But did you think about this? And once we've done that, we've now kind of done a circle so that everybody now is thinking, everybody is thinking about the answer, right? And you're gonna think not once, but maybe you're gonna think twice about the video and its importance. So that essentially is how the course is going to go. Um, on Sundays, typically around nine o'clock, I'm going to plan on having a conference. So we'll do a conference call and essentially you'll get an email. So how I set this up is I click on this conference button. It says add a conference. So I add this conference. I'm going to invite all the course members right? And it's just going to be, we'll set it, I'll, I usually set it for no time limit in case we go long, but you will get an email about this conference. So if you want to join, if you would like to talk about something, you have questions about the class, then you will just, obviously, when you get the email, you click on the link and it will open you right up into the video. And it works fairly well. It's called Big Blue Button. And, uh, um, Again, we'll, if we need to spend a half an hour, an hour, we'll talk about things. If you have any questions, make sure to send me an email. Uh, I'll try to answer, obviously, as quickly as I possibly can. If you need to get a hold of me, most of you already know my, uh, my office number. It's 859-344-3621. Now that belongs to um, Liz Galp, our administrative person. 
Uh, do not ask her to send you to my office, right? You need to call me and connect with me at home or away from school. Um, so if you can do that, she'll connect me and then we'll talk. Um, if not, emails will work perfectly well. Um, obviously, my Thomas More email is byerlyl at thomasmore.edu. So again, if you have any questions, please email me. Uh, I look forward to uh, the next couple of weeks of class.